All right, so let's move on to uh, the pharynx. This is a portion of the digestive tract uh, that's between uh, the mouth and the esophagus here. So this area right there, uh, that is the pharynx. All right, and so when we create a bolus in our mouth, mixing that food and saliva, our tongue is gonna push uh, that bolus to our pharynx, and that's gonna trigger uh, the um, uh, swallowing reflex. So lots of things happen that our tongue closes off the mouth, the uvula soft palate move up, so that closes off the nasopharynx there. And our larynx, our voice box actually moves up. And when it moves up, it diverts the epiglottis over, and the epiglottis is going to move or divert uh, the swallowed substances to the esophagus. All right. So uh, now let's take a look at the esophagus. And I don't have a real good picture of the esophagus, but the esophagus uh, is between our pharynx and our stomach. So let's move on to the stomach picture here. So this is the end of the esophagus there. All right. Now peristaltic contractions are going to move the bolus down uh, the esophagus. All right. Uh, our esophagus is collapsed when there isn't any food in there. Now at the bottom of our esophagus is a sphincter known as the lower esophageal sphincter, also known as the cardiac sphincter. And what that does is that closes the stomach openings. Uh, so really what it does is it's there to help prevent regurgitation of the stomach contents into the esophagus uh, because the lining of the esophagus is, is not, um, it's, it doesn't, it can't deal with the acidity of the stomach. So uh, the it, lining of the stomach can deal with that acidity, but if the acidic secretions of the stomach make their way into our esophagus, this is what leads to a burning sensation there, uh, and this is what is known as heartburn. All right, so let's move on to the stomach. So this is the stomach here. This is a digestive organ between our esophagus uh, and the small intestine, which is shown there. All right, uh, it stores food as well and the typical capacity of the stomach is about one liter, but this can uh, go up to four liters uh, if you stretch it enough, all right? Now, at the end of the stomach is a pyloric sphincter, so that's gonna control gastric emptying, so uh, substances leaving uh, the, the stomach. Let's take a look at gastric glands. So gastric glands, these are found in the mucosa of the stomach. Uh, these are gonna secrete uh, gastric juices, so uh, that juice is composed of several things. One is hydrochloric acid. Uh, the hydrochloric acid is there, uh, our pH of our stomach is like one to two, and it's there to kill off microorganisms uh, that are, might be in swallowed materials. Can break down some of our food materials, but it's mainly there to kill off microorganisms. Uh, also what's secreted in here is pepsin. Now pepsin is an enzyme uh, that's going to break down proteins. So protein chemical digestion starts here in our stomach. Next is intrinsic factor. So intrinsic factor actually helps our small intestine absorb vitamin B12. And then lastly is mucus uh, that is secreted out of these glands. Now the mucus that's secreted from the stomach is thicker than what we see in other parts of the body and it's also more alkaline or basic. And that's to help protect the stomach lining. All right, if we look at gastric absorption, uh, so gastric absorption, uh, we don't absorb a whole lot of stuff. Our small intestine is our major absorptive organ, but our stomach is going to absorb uh, water, and salts, uh, lipid soluble drugs, and also alcohol. And this is why if you drink on an empty stomach, you're gonna get inebriated much, much faster. Next is mixing and emptying movements. So uh, we have a mixing movement. Uh, so that's gonna mix the food substances with the gastric juice. And what we create out of this is what is known as chyme. So this is a semi-fluid paste of food particles. All right, so the mixing movement is gonna move that uh, together. And then the chyme is moved out of the stomach by peristaltic contractions. All right, so our next stop along uh, this process here is going into the small intestine. So before we do that, let's take a, look, take a look at some other organs that release secretions into the small intestine. So the first is the pancreas. Now here's the pancreas here, and unfortunately the picture isn't showing, but the stomach would be right there. So this is a glandular organ that secretes digestive enzymes and hormones. And what it creates is what is known as pancreatic juice. So uh, pancreatic juice is a combination of enzymes and bicarbonate. 
So bicarbonate is produced because this is the beginning of the small intestine called the duodenum. So this is, the stomach was here, so we have this acidic chyme coming from the stomach into the duodenum. So the bicarbonate is produced in here to neutralize that acidic chyme, all right? Also what's found in there uh, is a cocktail of enzymes, including peptidases, which break down proteins, lipases, which break down fats and oils, so lipids, uh, uh, nucleases, which break down uh, nucleotides, and also amylases, which break down starches or carbohydrates. So the next organ along here is our liver. So this is showing our liver here and here. And we go to the next picture here, this is showing a blow up of our liver. So in general, the liver is a central relay station for nutrients. It has many functions, which we'll get to in a minute. So what happens here is that this, as you can see, from the digestive tract. So blood from our digestive tract goes through our liver. All right, and then our liver is gonna absorb and redistribute those nutrients, all right? So let's look at the functions of our liver. One is carbohydrate metabolism. So it can make glycogen, now remember glycogen is our storage form of glucose. So it can make glycogen from glucose, just long chains of glucose. It can also break down, so uh, that's after we eat a meal, but in between meals, if we're getting hungry, we can break down that glycogen into glucose and, then, and release that into the blood. And so that's what our liver can also do. Our liver can also convert non-carbohydrates uh, to glucose. Now let's look at lipid metabolism. So it can break down fatty acids for energy, all right? It can make lipoproteins, that's a lipid protein complex. It can make phospholipids as well as cholesterol. Uh, and it can also convert proteins and carbohydrates to fats, so for storage. Next is protein uh, metabolism. So in protein metabolism, it's gonna deaminate amino acids. So in deamination of amino acids, uh, all amino acids can be used for energy if they're not used in making a protein. So to use them for energy though, we have to chop off a nitrogen, and that's what deamination is, chopping this nitrogen off of that amino acid, because we can't use the nitrogen for energy. And then we'll convert that into urea, and then we're gonna urinate that out, all right? That uh, also makes plasma proteins. Uh, so another thing, uh, function here is, uh, is storage. So it stores glycogen, iron, vitamins A, D, and B12. It also is a blood filter, so it's gonna remove, uh, you know, um, uh, damaged red blood cells and foreign substances by hepatocytes. Uh, so. Uh, by macrophages that are found in the, uh, the liver. Next, detoxification. So it's uh, gonna remove toxins from our blood. Uh, in that, uh, one of the things that it breaks down is alcohol. Lastly, here is secretion. So it secretes bile. So let's go ahead and talk about bile. And so that's what this green stuff is trying to show, or these bile ducts. So bile is a fluid secreted by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Uh, it aids digestive enzymes uh, in that it breaks down fat molecules into smaller droplets. So if you have a large thing of fat, it's going to break it down into smaller things of fats. Uh, and that's going to allow the lipases to work on those a little better. All right. It also enhances the absorption of fatty acids and cholesterol, as well as fat-soluble vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K. Next is the gallbladder. So this is a gallbladder here. Uh, this is a sac-like organ associated with the liver that stores and concentrates bile. And by concentrating bile, it removes water from it, all right? So as you can see, you know, uh, the liver and the gallbladder produce, uh, release their secretions in the, into the duodenum, the beginning of the small intestine, just like the pancreas does, all right? Now, some people may develop gallstones, and so this is an x-ray showing these gallstones. And gallstones are made of crystals of cholesterol. Uh, and the problem with gallstones is they can block some of these ducts and then cause you a lot of problems.